So, uh, as we see, uh, the digital industry, Dalt especially into the payment industry, has grown well into post-COVID area. So, uh, I think you people have uh, learned a lot from this session, uh, especially from the banking sector. So, now uh, let's uh, learn something about the data security. So, uh, Mr. Mazasar, please hand over to you. Thank you. Yes, guys. So, my topic is data security and privacy challenges. So, to be honest, you might be aware that we are living in an age where hacking is available as a service. So, whenever you want, it's just a matter of putting someone's name. You can pay $60, $100 maximum, and they can actually work as a hacker on your behalf and breach your privacy. And it looks like very simple. In, in, and in order to prove this, I would like to show you a small demo. In this demo, someone is trying to send a message to his colleague or his friend that there is some changes in the application. We have a beta application and you have been selected to go and test this in your environment. The guy will accept this request and actually that APK file, which is a mobile app, itself is a malware. So without his knowledge, the mobile is going to be compromised. Things will look fantastic. So even though he will restart, it will remain there. It will not appear even as a mobile app in his mobile app list. And it will be one second job for him. And eventually, he's going to forget this. But for the hacker, they are going to get a persistent connection with this mobile app. That is the, the scary part of this demo. And eventually, he's going to breach his privacy that you will see. And it should be a kind of eye-opening for you guys. So I will explain. So this is the right side, the hacker. Left side is the victim. He is saying, I got a good mobile app. It is under testing. Could you please go and install on your mobile? He may even motivate him to pay some amount in dollars, part of this testing. And then, actually, yeah. So this guy will say, OK, give me this APK. And the moment this guy is going to accept this mobile app for testing, his mobile is gone. He's going to be compromised. So this is the victim users. Eventually, this, that was the file. And now file is there. It's not working. You'll say, OK, let me, let me check back. And in the background, he got the shell. And the shell means what? The admin rights on this particular mobile app. And after getting this, sky is the limit to actually breach your privacy. How come? Look at this. So now, as far as you got the shell, he's going to get this interesting GUI. In this interesting GUI, he's able actually to see his location right now, where he's sitting. He's going to expose his all passwords, passcodes, Facebook, Skype, all of your password in plain text he's able to see. Your passcode itself to actually unlock your mobile is there. This is your call logs. All call logs are available for his analysis. This is voice over IP details, all of your SMS now at his mercy, all of your emails, whatever you have configured, whether they are corporate or private emails, your Facebook chat, your WhatsApp, so-called secure WhatsApp, all chat you can see, all of your videos, Locations. So, look at the height of all these options, which someone sitting maybe 10,000 kilometers away is enjoying this. So, unfortunately, whether we like or not, that is the state of affair. And that is the area where this privacy word, usually I say, it should be no more available in the dictionary, unfortunately. And as I said, it is so simple that the cost is not like wow cost. It's just $60, $70.
you go and you just provide this. So you, you're not supposed to be a hacker, what I want to say, unfortunately, to do this uh, criminal job. And why it is happening, my analysis is that we as a human, we are very much hooked with these smart devices. And on the other side, machines are learning more. There are bots available nowadays which actually can do a hacking in an automated way. You don't need even to hire a hacker or, or, or do any manual job. So these machines in future, and even it's happening now, they are doing so-called penetration testing, so-called assessment, and trying to breach humans. And unfortunately, we have actually given up and we have given this type of control to them. So we are the actually responsible person. So as a lot of my friends said, the data is oil and this and that, but to be honest, I just came from a flight from uh, Islamabad, and of course the mobile was off, and I was really feeling that during this two-hour flight, I am losing my oxygen. Why? Because I was not attached with my smart device. So I will say the data, yes, it is oil, but for me nowadays, the data is the oxygen. We all can't live without this data in our hand in the form of a smart device. So in this case, up to 2030, these are the top 10 cybersecurity threats which are applicable. And unfortunately, number two and number three is relevant to data and privacy. One of them is advanced disinformation campaign, and you must be enjoying all this, you know, audio leaks and, and deep, uh, you know, the deep fake videos and audios. And look at the, the, the catastrophic uh, consequences of such information. So, th yes, this is the reality. It is the bitter reality, but we'll have to see how we can actually learn from this. So in this area, gone are those days where hackers used to compromise a website, putting their flag and then telling you, hey guys, you have been hacked. No, that was long time back. We are living in an area where people love to hide their identity. So they will always love to work under the radar. And in this case, like 54% of breaches remain undiscovered for months and sometimes even for years. Why? Because they might be exfiltrating the data in the, big, in the background and then must be utilizing, monetizing it for their own intention and business. So there is a well-known saying, God knows someone in the bidding process always, one, one company is always the winning uh, company. So there is a fair chance that they might have compromise the procurement portal, so they are well aware of who is really offering the maximum or minimum prices, and then they can go, go and offer the reasonable prices to win the, to, to win the business. So that is the, you know, the different way of utilizing data using hacking uh, while putting yourself under the radar and getting advantage, such business advantage in your hand. And why it is happening? Because no matter we as a CISO, we try our best to go and put all possible control, but there is no 100% perfections, right? So there is a fair chance. So it's like this hall consisting of, I think, 10 doors, right? So no matter you go and close all these doors, there might be some hidden door, you know, the back door. So these hackers, they always look for these type of small doors. Uh, any, any single vulnerability, it could be even one person out of 99% perfection will help them, unfortunately, to compromise your network. Uh, you might be aware, just last week, there was a big data breach happened where in Denmark, all the drivers, they were utilizing a mobile app to decide about the maximum speed or the minimum speed of the train. That mobile app was hacked. So what does it mean? So some hacker 
could go and say, rather than driving the train with 100 kilometers per hour speed, you go and drive at 200 kilometers. It means he is going to detrail actually the complete train. So thank God they, they came to know about this. They took the action. They shut down the server. So all the trains, they were enforced to stay at one place. So, so dealing with this type of data, it shows the criticality. And one of the, I will say, the, the vulnerabilities, look at this. So yes, these drivers, they were using this mobile app, but this mobile app was having access to Gmail, Facebook, Instagram. So, so the lesson learned is these type of things should be hard coded, should be hardened, and should be having only specific application. And such uh, public application should not be allowed to become a victim. There is a new trend now. Typically, hackers were learning about the organization. And usually, they spend like six months, one year sometime to understand the organization. And then one day, they come and attack you. So usually, I usually laugh once people say, please go and secure us. There is an incident. It's too late. Because typical good hackers, they come on your network six months back, they do study, and then one day, you know, they press the button. So what I'm proposing, that similar way hackers study organizations, CISO or the IT people should start reading and understanding hacker behavior according to region, according to their industry, and see what type of weapons they are keeping so that you can plan accordingly. So it should be two-way communication. This shows ultimately the data is being kept on big data centers. I was, should I say I disturb or what? But look at where our neighbor, neighboring country, India, is going. Just within three years, all these big companies, Amazon, Facebook, Googles, they are going to spend $20 billion to make more than 45 big data center in India. So look at the confidence, because this never come unless you give them assurance about the security. And we are, by the way, we are still thinking about how to secure over critical data. You know what I mean, for our VIP. So look at this and look at you know, their uh, maturity level. So data move around different areas, so whether this employs physical environment, network application and processes, it's very, very difficult to go and take the control across all this. I'll give you an example. Whenever I go to restaurant, I give my credit card and I don't bother myself to actually go with him and put the, the PIN number. Or sometimes the PIN number is not there, he can simply swap. And tomorrow, if that poor guy, if he's going to take the copy of my credit card, tomorrow I am going to blame my bank. My data, my credit card is hacked. It's all your problem. The, you need to understand the data is revolving across multiple channels. The most important thing is use your common sense and better not to give your data to different places unless it is very much legitimately required. Something new, you might be aware of malware, right? Are you aware of this? What is this? Muleware. So muleware is a new way where hackers they have discovered, rather than wasting time with devices, technology, and then hacking them, let's hack human. Not always through social engineering, but unfortunately, while paying them some good amount, to become actually their bot and then contribute for this big sin. So this is unfortunately is a new sin. Imagine if you have a system administrator, the main pilot, the domain admin. If he, this guy, God forbid, if he goes in wrong hand, your whole company data is gone. You don't need to typically hack the network. You just need to hack the person itself. So that is called Moolwe. So in this case, usually we pay attention for external hackers that they are taking our data, but we need to pay attention 
where our insider attacks are more than external you know attacks and these insider attacks to be honest everyone trust they might be hidden they might be you know, they might remain under radar not for one day not for month even for ages even for forever because ultimately you are going to trust this guy someone needs to trust the driver to drive your car right but you'll have to now nowadays make sure a proper screening is happening you'll have to keep on keep on monitoring even your system administrators so privacy perspective your data is going through all these multiple channel we discussed i think earlier in different presentation one thing is important here that every step of the data supply chain is an entry point for new classes of risk so whenever this data is traveling from origin up to the final destination there are multiple junctions i will say so if the train is coming from karachi to lahore of course khanewal junction or rohri junction will come so these type of junctions comes with their own what i will say complications and people go and make them uh, more complicated manipulation of data is possible uh, through this whole uh, i will say supply chain of data and will have to put different controls accordingly so once we we say put control this is a kind of guidance we recommend not only because of some compliance requirement because in pakistan there is no something like gdpr but for the sake of securing your your private and your corporate pri uh, uh, privacy you'll have to pay attention one thing is a very important that companies should pay should use should actually exercise consent should take consent from you before they share your data that is very much important data anonymization is very much important so that should be also exercise there is a new debate we used to secure our data center but where is the actual data so now the actual data to be honest is on your laptop right so you'll have to simultaneously not only improve the security posture of your data center but also your laptop so there are new technologies edr and this type of things being introduced so both require actually equal i will say concentration you can't ignore this now these are the most famous sectors like manufacturing healthcare telco banking who are utilizing this data i will not go into detail in the favor of time but let me give you one example in case of healthcare where my uh, blood group is there you know in 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 um, cyber security there are three things important confidentiality integrity and availability so if someone is able to actually play with the integrity of my blood group making from a ab plus to ab negative and god forbid if i'm i i came across through some accident and suddenly they want to give me the uh, the blood they will follow the hospital record and if that wrong wrong blood group was in, is going to be injected of course it can create death so imagine this type of manipulation can even create human loss what i want to say so it's not a typical financial loss this is quite interesting we spend too much time we think about big r erp even in microsoft perspective pivotal tables access report you know interactive dashboards artificial intelligence all these buzzword but practically what is happening the guy is saying go back they are asking to download data in excel i have seen with all due respect big chartered accountants using lot of application during their study but practically you'll find they are going to use excel file so what i want to say these excel file they are carrying actually plenty of very very important critical data that needs to be secure in addition to typical erp solution one second last good example of data is data authenticity this is very important take example of linkedin if i go today and 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 just claim that i am a graduate from harvard i am graduate from oxford no one from linkedin is going to challenge this right 
So based on this, there are a lot of fake LinkedIn accounts which are doing social engineering and trying to make people fool, whether it is HR offer or it is some technical help where anyone can go and exaggerate himself. A system analyst can, can go and say he is the chief scientist in this organization. So, so, so we'll have to understand this in this world where deep fake news are there, also deep fake uh, accounts, no matter LinkedIn is a very professional platform, one should be very, very careful because the data is not being, what I want to say, is properly being authenticated there, right? And this is the well-known picture Look at this because these companies, they don't have actually, uh, they don't ever charge you for any money. So of course, one should use their common sense. It means these companies, especially Facebook, if they are taking this much of data from you, somewhere they are gonna monetize them. So never blame them. Better you use your common sense and use those applications which are taking as less as possible uh, private information of yourself. So I leave the decision to you guys. But if you look at the previous picture, after this Facebook and WhatsApp and, so it looks like we as a user, we are just standing, unfortunately, let me say naked, in front of this social media, and they know each and every white about yourself, right? And this is a very, very scary picture. So that's why on a, on a lighter note, I say, you don't need to ask Gali Ki Pupo, how is this ladka, you know, in case of any wedding. You just go and see how this guy, guy is behaving on Facebook, Instagram, and how he's holding his emotions. And actually that gives you the actual rating about the overall profile of yourself. So if we are fed up of this, I thought about a demand. The demand is one day people will say, I am tired of being very popular. I'm tired of actually known on all these social media. I really want to get rid of this. As of today, it's difficult because the data is spread across all these platform. It's very difficult to go and, and go and cancel or delete this. But I was doing a study of Imperial College. Imperial College, they have mentioned those technologies which are coming in 20 years, in 10 years, or maybe in upcoming 50 years. In upcoming 50 years, one of the technology is this. It's called digital footprint eraser. So people will wish to have a digital footprint eraser to delete their data across all these platforms so that you can start your human life, normal human life, not the metaverse or not the digital, you know, human life. So that is uh, in big demand. And last but not the least, as I said in the beginning, this word data privacy ideally should be removed from our dictionary because having all this type of information and if you really want to actually live a happy life, I think we should follow this. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. So just close your eyes, don't speak a lot, and spend a good human life. Thank you so much.